What's up, everybody? Welcome to the zoo. We have an incredible show for you today. Today, we are going to be talking about dating during COVID, and we're going to be chatting with the producer and creative of Entrenos, Edwin Lacone. Don't go anywhere. You are watching the zoo. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the zoo. Today, we are going to be talking about COVID and dating, and that is today's Big Deal. All right, guys, I am so excited to bring our panel today. We have a very beautiful dais with us today. We have AK, how are you? And we have yes. professional model Clarice. Thank you so much for being here. Oh my God, thank you. Now, what has dating been like for you two gals during COVID? Wow, well, as you know, last time I came on, I kind of teased my OnlyFans. Right. Um, where I show my feet and perform various astral sex right. acts, mm -hmm. which is just intercourse with the stars. Mm, of course. Um, I think everybody participated in the astral sex, right? We did. Yeah. We tried. Not everyone really has the gift. Mm. I think it's something that takes time, and it's hard to open up, you know, like, especially with all these cameras. But we did our best. What would you call that, a group, like, astral sex adventure? Uh, just an astral orgy. You don't have to get weird about okay, it. Okay, I like that. Okay, great. <laughs> now, Clarice, can I ask you? You're glowing. Why? Um, well, it's funny you mentioned that because I forgot all my best makeup. So thank you. Oh, you're it's natural. Um, yeah, it's actually just a natural glow. Sometimes um, when I get up at the crack of dawn, I get up with the roosters. Right. And now roosters like on the farm or <laughs> figuratively speaking. Oh. Fires. Yeah. Um, it's it's small children in my garage. Oh. Yeah, and I throw them um, seeds. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Got to keep them fed. Yeah, absolutely. And once we're done, um, we do a dance. We do a traditional Icelandic dance. We hold hands and go in a circle. Um, I teach them today's lesson, which usually, um, well, we can't talk about that right now. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, and then um, I check my OnlyFans, which, as I was saying, um, I've I'm making over a hundred thousand dollars a month. Now, were wow. you were you like, how did you feel when you found out that Cardi B was coming on the app, and you know different A-list celebrities? <sighs> I know mean, Bella Thorne. Bella Thorne. Like are, are you threatened by the competition? Money. How does your feet stand? I got nervous, but I think I'm such a specific niche mm. that no one can really uh, mess with me. You know, it's hard because. No one knows the techniques that I have. Right. And so instead of just sexualizing myself, I, I become sex. I am sex. You are. And I offer it out um, <laughs> in a responsible way. You know, it's not, it's not porn. Like, no. you know Pornhub? Yeah. I'm the hub. Right. Yeah. And they're the porn. Yeah. And so I put the hub in Pornhub. Now, I, I heard you got some interesting requests from people on OnlyFans. What are some crazy <sighs> things people are asking you to do, Clarice? So many people ask me to spit in their mouth. And even during COVID? Especially during COVID. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Because they oh. want my they want my nectar. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> right. They but, want my they want my jungle juice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, right. Now milkshake yeah, brings they them do. to the yard. It brings I all the it. boys to the yard. <laughs> it does. And especially the weird BDSM boys. Right. And and they love it. They they love my nectar and they want it. And I keep telling them, look, like, I, I don't want to spit. Like people send me test tubes and are like, just spit in here and I'll pour it in my mouth. I don't want any of that. I don't want. No. It, the liability is so great. Right. Like imagine if you know suddenly someone drinks this and they're hotter than I am. We you know can't what I have mean? that. Yeah, like the liability for someone to drink my juice and then take my power is huge. Like exactly. I only have astral sex with people younger than I am, 18 plus, hey, obviously. Thank you. Um, because then I extract their youth. And You're I like think, Madonna. Yes, <laughs> a I am like Madonna, but prettier. <laughs> of course. Uh, and a lot of getting older is youth extraction. I think yeah. it's something that the media doesn't talk about enough. Mm. And the older you get, the more important it is to actually take youth from younger people because mm -hmm. they don't know any better. They don't know anything. They just want your what? They want your wisdom, and so you can take their youth. That was beautiful. First of all, I've never felt more inspired or alive. What has dating Thank been you. like for you, Jordan? I'm Pope? sorry. I was just 
looking at their lip gloss the entire time. You know what came on? Like, that lip gloss is cool. That lip gloss is popular. Oh my god, little mama. Yeah! Yeah. Clarice has got it going on. <laughs> yeah. And you know, this wasn't her, like, cute lip gloss. Like, the, no. what do you say? Kylie Jenner? Yeah, Kylie Lip Kit. Yeah, it was it. I actually met Lil Mama at a dumpster fire party in 2011. What's a dumpster fire party? You light a dumpster on fire. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was so fun. You've been getting wild, Clarice. Yeah, well, not anymore. OK. Um, you know, I'm a preschool teacher now, so. Oh. <laughs> so you had to start settling down a little bit. Yeah, okay. yeah, I think it's important. Um, I think you're perfect to be in an elementary school. <laughs> Thank you. Well, they're actually they're in my elementary. garage. As I said, they're in my garage. Right, right, right. Yeah, Sorry. and, um, but my garage is nice. It's spacious. It's, it's one car garage, but it's big. It, like, it right. would fit like a Jeep or and something. And the kids are For so sure. small. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I they're very it. small. Um, I painted it red, so it's really like <laughs> dragon. Popping. Yeah, yeah, dragon. Like your only fans. Exactly. Well, that's a little more popping. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we know what you mean. Um, yeah. Now, wh wh what is your relationship? Are you yeah. single right now? Are you dating? What has COVID been like for you? Yeah, I'm single. I think I'm enjoying it too. I don't. I don't like the whole like dating app thing. Like, I don't know. It's just so boring to me. Like the same questions over and over. How are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. Like, what the hell? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't feel, I don't, I don't feel a connection. Clarice, personally. do you have any Definitely tips not. for her on how to spice it up on a dating app conversation? Um, well, or just spice it up, period. You know, why do I have to date? You don't. But here's if you'd like thing. to, here's right? some tips. <laughs> if you ask people to spit in your mouth, the ones who say no, those are good ones. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like reverse psychology a yeah, little bit. Yeah, like I only get the ones who say yes. So that's why I have trouble with dating apps. Okay. But if someone is not willing to spit in your mouth, he's a keeper. Then you're like, okay, definitely. Yeah. Well, don't go anywhere because we will be right back with more tips from Clarice. Welcome back to the zoo. We are here with our beautiful panel, AK and Clarice. We're talking about David dating during COVID. <laughs> David, David, that David? was somebody I dated at the beginning of the COVID. Slip? That was my guilty conscience. Was that a I was dating slip? somebody. That was a slip, right? <laughs> Wait, here. tell us. I was dating somebody at the beginning of COVID who uh, refused to wear deodorant. Did he spit in your mouth? I would not let him Stop. because it didn't seem clean and I don't want to get West Nile virus or whatever disease that he could have. Oh my God, he had West Nile? Probably. Yeah, I've been with a couple of people who've had that. Oh my God. Yeah. How can you tell if they have that? Um, they have flare-ups. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, um, rashes. Yeah. Okay. Hives. Their hands turn green too. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But that might be something else. Right. It's unclear. Now, Clarice, I have to ask you, you're such a woman. You know, what type of man do you think it will take to lock you down? Ooh. Ooh, that is the question of the hour, isn't it, Nikki? <laughs> um, I've thought a lot about this because Same. I bet. Um, honestly, it's, it's someone with many qualities that you have. Oh. oh. <laughs> We're such back. good friends that I wouldn't want to disrupt our friendship. Um, but it's someone, you know, you're well-dressed put together, you're funny, you don't spit in my mouth. You say no to that not question. Yet. You, have <laughs> a, you have a creative streak. Um, I'm horrible in the bedroom. I could bore a necrophiliac. Did you say horrible or hard? <laughs> horrible. That's a very important distinction, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Because if you're hard, then that works. <laughs> right. Thank you for clearing that up. But we won't really do it. Right. We'll look to the stars. Right. Whenever you get tempted, look to the stars. I will. When, honestly, whenever I look through my telescope, oh my I, I think of you. <laughs> I should write a book. You really what should. What would you title that book? Look to the stars. OK. And then yeah. get a wash rag. Oh my god, exactly. <laughs> well, the thing is, I have spontaneous combustion, which is normally <laughs> reserved for like an Erlenmeyer flask or some type of ninth grade biology experiment. <laughs> OK. But it happens actually inside my body. Right. And so I release um, unannounced, and at any moment, um, I could release. <laughs> Is that nervous I love how for I got you? Quiet. I was I like, mean, so, "You're gonna hear." Can I just ask? Suppose you're in front of the preschool class, and this happens. <laughs> do we need some? Do you need some water? <laughs> Yeah. I feel like Clarice feels a little hot right now, you know? Um, Clarice, you give her I'm sorry, all the I'm attention. I'm sorry to hit you with such hard-hit <laughs> um, hard questions. 
Yeah, it's it's a National flare up. I, I must be having a flare up. Um, I don't want not you West Nile. I don't though. want you to combust right here on the set. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's just all look at the stars no, for a second no, no. for some clarity on no. the situation. The thing yeah. is, oh, when sorry. when I when I teach the kids, um, I'm in I'm in such a wholesome place mm. that I I really think that it's impossible for me to. Um, to release in that way, I'm I do release. To hear that. I do release uh, educationally. I have an educational release, right? Where um, words will come out, like um, learn, like uh, symbiosis. Oh, to the preschoolers. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're advanced, huh? <laughs> yeah, they're really wow. advanced. Wow. Now, Chloe, um, I, I just want to ask you, what do you want out of life? Oh, oh God, that is so. I mean, at this point, I've done it all. I like, I don't know a single other preschool teacher who simultaneously sells photos of her feet. Is it just one toe or like the full foot? Um, or is it like both? I sell bunion picks. <laughs> okay. Oh, hot. I have specialized nice. It's not clients. even a toe, it's a bunion. Well, it depends, because I have specialized clients. The bunions go for a lot, because frankly, I should get them removed. <laughs> and I, I'm just keeping them on because their demand is so high. Right. I think you should get them insured. Frankly, definitely. Do you know a guy? I Britney Spears has her legs insured. Let me call her once, okay. we, once we get off the set. Okay, meet me at Koreatown at 4:30. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll be there. Perfect. <laughs> now I want to ask: Have you ever been on a beach or by a pool and someone goes, "Wait, I know those feet." I've been on a. <laughs> can I say that? <laughs> Probably <Oops>. not. <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> Oops, she did it again. <laughs> yes, I've been on a beach, but frankly. This complexion, like, it doesn't happen overnight, okay? Like, mm. one day in the sun could ruin everything for me. No, no, no I was saying that somebody recognized your feet on the beach. Oh, like my somebody God. somebody was just walking through the sand. They were like, wait, I know that bunion. Well, that's right. sort of why I don't go. Right. Because then then what's the OnlyFans for? Like, I, I, I'm, I can't show them for free. Like, right. pay to play. <laughs> pay to play. Pay to play. Yeah. You, that's my dating advice number two. Yeah. <laughs> Bruno, um... Well, we don't get along all the time. He He's does, so jealous of you. He does say something really smart every once in a while. And the other day he told me, you have to risk it to get the biscuit. Oh. Wow. And I really resonated with that because, number one, I love drizzling honey on a biscuit. And number two, I think risk and reward is everything right now. Like, I went to um, a 300-person rave <laughs> recently and I didn't get COVID um, and it was a big risk right. but the reward was <laughs> I was on Molly for like 30 hours. Wow. Must have been epic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the reward was way better. How was your jaw after that experience? It must have hurt. Um, yeah, but I had someone to help me soften it. <laughs> I want to go over my dating advice before I forget. Okay, so number one is look at the stars. Yeah, look to the stars. Look, look to don't the stars. Don't look at them yeah, because they, they really don't want anything to do with you. Okay, so the, actually the star doesn't even matter. Just look at it, not well, like... Well, yeah, it does look matter. Look to it, I not at it. I think there's a miscommunication. Um, <laughs> okay, look to the stars. <laughs> Number two, um, risk it. To, to get, get the biscuit. To get the biscuit. Yeah, and then put some honey on it. Not nectar? Well, no, because then it turns into spitting in the mouth, and we right. already talked about that. Um, but definitely drizzle some some honey. Okay. Um, local, On the biscuit. Yeah, local is better for immunity and some propolis too. You could do some propolis with the honey. Okay. Um, and wellness formula, um, chow chow ching lo, Chinese herbs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next. Um, there was a third one which I kind of forgot. <laughs> yeah, sell your freaking feet on OnlyFans. Right, 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 right. Yeah. No, play. What was it? Pay to play? Pay to play. Yeah, pay to play. Yeah, and okay, then there definitely we go. say no to spitting in the mouth. Okay, and then you have to find the ones that say no to spitting in your mouth, well, not the ones that say yes. You know, right. I have to tell you, after this conversation, I'm going to look to the stars and I'm probably going to get laid. <laughs> so stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Get locked into the zoo because we're not going anywhere. We'll be back right back after the break. Bye. Nikki and I, 
Okay, we are holding it down. But next up, you get to see my Zoom interview with Rita Indiana, who is just like a Dominican genius. I all love right? that name. Yeah, Rita Indiana, Rita exactly. Indiana. Mm. I, I love her. Um, so come to find out, um, she started writing, no, she's been an author. She put out some music like waits 10 years but in the meantime she's like writing like three different novels all uh, follow-ups no, 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 like she's just an author, you know, oh. like she's a creative being. But you think about this person and um, you, she, she's queer, but like uh, the Dominican Republic doesn't really have a lot of people that, you know, like uh, represent them in the mass media and like really puts out literature to discuss, you know, just like being a human. Um, and she puts out her music and she did it. Um, her latest album was produced by Calle Treces Visitante too. Wow. So her music is very like, uh, uh, and she's rapping, but it has like the Afro beats in the background, dude. So I'm like, I'm loving it, I dude. I love Afro beats. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Same. dude. Get so the party started. For Spanish don't. music to do that, you know, we're just like, we got it going on, y'all. Right. We pushing frontiers. So this is my interview with Rita Indiana. Bueno, ¿qué tal, Rita? ¿Cómo te encuentras hoy? Yo me llamo Ana Karen. Hola, Ana Karen, ¿cómo estás? Mucho gusto por estar hoy con nosotros. Gracias a ustedes por invitarme. I was so excited to talk to you because uh, your music tiene como mucha influencia caribe, you know, pero no nada más es una cosa, vamos a decir, el merengue, pero también un poquito del electric. Entonces, it's like... Me encanta, es una fusión caribe. Así es. <laughs> Así lo describieras tú. <laughs> es, mucha, es una mezcla de cosas, no hay de todo. Hay mucha música también, hay norteamericana, afroamericana, blues, eh, soul, rock, man, rock pesado, metal, eh, punk, pero hay mucho, hay merengue, hay otros ritmos afrodominicanos que son más folclóricos, hay plena, pequeña, hay de todo, es como un collage de cosas. I'm like, qué pena que esto no haya sido en persona, sino que aquí tuviera alguien en, su, en los drums. Okay. <laughs> Vengo de escuchar tu nuevo sencillo, como un dragón. Ah, sí, 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 y me encanta. So vamos a hablar un poquito de esa trayectoria, porque ese es tu primer álbum ya después de 10 años. Pero en ese año te has mantenido muy ocupada. Has escrito muchas novelas o muchos libros, ¿no? literatura. <laughs> uh, explícanos un poquito de eso, porque escribías un poco de música, 10 años, ¿qué, qué ha pasado? Pues mira, después del último disco del Juidero, me quité de la música eh, para escribir literatura, que es lo que hacía antes de hacer ese disco, ¿no? Eh, yo empecé como escritora. Entonces, pues, publiqué tres novelas más, me he dedicado también a criar mis hijos, a estar con mi familia, a hacer otras cosas que me gustan. He hecho música para películas, pero no había hecho música con mi nombre, ¿no? Y ahora, pues, llegó el momento y aquí estamos con, con el nuevo disco. ¿Y en esos 10 años sentiste que extrañabas la música? Bueno, estuve haciendo música, o sea, que nunca me hizo falta como que el trabajo de estudio, porque estuve haciendo música para películas y, sí. y comerciales. Eh, pero no es lo mismo, ¿no? no es lo mismo cuando uno está ahí escribiendo para uno, para uno. En cantar. un proyecto. Y entonces, pues, no me, no me hacía falta porque quería estar haciendo esas otras cosas. Ahora que llegó el momento, pues, entonces ya le metía de nuevo a esto. Perfecto. Y entonces, el título de este nuevo álbum se llama Mandinga Times. Uh -huh. Mandinga Times. Mandinga Times. ¿Y qué significa Mandinga? Pues, mira, Mandinga es un ethnic group. Que, que llegó a América durante la trata de, de los esclavos. Eh, es de la mayor cantidad de, de personas esclavizadas que, que llegaron a América. Eh, pero también es una palabra que significa muchas cosas en Latinoamérica. Significa una persona negra, una persona queer, una, una persona hipersexual, un beating. También te dicen, te dieron mandinga cuando they beat you up. Oh, ok. Eh, es un plato también de comida, se dice mandingueiro en la capoeira, cuando uno hace trucos de capoeira se le dice mandinguero. Es una palabra muy, muy usada en Latinoamérica. Entonces, eh, yo quería una palabra que, que, que como que describiera un poco todo lo que somos y lo que estamos pasando en este momento, ¿no? Y, y, y pues también es una palabra que es producto de la colonización, de la que somos todos producto en, en nuestro continente. Eh, y por eso eh, es el título del disco. Entonces, ese título es como decir mandinga en todos sus, um, en all its different um, sig sig signifiers, um, times, como es tiempo de, de, de todo esto. Es como, un, es, like a, es como un tiempo un poco apocalíptico, like, mm -hmm. I don't say end times, pero maybe change times, o sea, un tiempo de, de mucho de, de cross of things, crossing de... Eh, desde, desde lo, el tiempo de los inmigrantes, el tiempo de las personas queer, el tiempo del cambio, de cambiar la mente, de, de entrar en otro paradigma, ¿no? 
Exacto. Me encanta. Y vamos a, el productor de este nuevo álbum fue visitante de Calle 13, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo se conocieron ustedes y cómo llegaron a trabajar en este, en este disco juntos? Pues mira, Eduardo es mi, es my neighbor. Él, él vive aquí cerca a uh -huh. unas cuantas calles y ya nos, habíamos, nos veíamos de vez en cuando tomar un café o lo que sea, o yo le pedí algún consejo de algo. Eh, y nada, se dio, o sea, hacía tiempo que lo habíamos hablado de que si yo volvía a la música que él quería producir el disco y cuando ya estuve ready, pues lo llamé y empezamos a trabajar casi inmediatamente. ¿Y cuál, cuál ha sido una memoria, um, así, like, a great memory that you had in making this album together? Bueno, maybe not so beautiful, pero creo que voy a recordar siempre este disco porque lo hice, lo terminé en medio de la pandemia, ¿no? Mm. Y esto fue, this is going to be like, Remarkable, eh, algo que le voy a contar a, a mis nietos y bisnietos cuando esté viejita, ¿no? Que, que terminamos ese disco. Ah, mire, ese disco que suena ahí lo hicimos, estábamos en un estudio con mascarilla, él y yo trancados, solos allí. Él casi grabó casi muchas de las guitarras y bajo, las grabó él, otros instrumentos también, porque no podíamos traer mucha gente al estudio, ¿no? Teníamos que estar allí solos. Y pues eso fue bien especial también y le da, le dio un sabor especial al disco. Que hayan sido un poquito, uh, tiempos un poquito más sencillos, ¿no? Donde nada más son ustedes y ya. Entonces, déjanos saber, um, al, especially the viewers, where we can follow you on social media or where you're most active. Eh, I'm most at en Instagram, Rita Indiana La Montra, así mismo, Rita Indiana La Montra, y en Twitter, Rita Indiana. Ahí estoy todos los días tirando paquetitos. Eh, y en el canal de YouTube, suscríbanse para que puedan, para que vean el contenido que estamos subiendo alrededor del disco. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to hear your whole album, Rita. Thank you. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. Keep it locked right here on the zoo, because after the break, Humberto is sitting down with Sheila Rivera. Now, I'm super excited because Humberto's gonna chat with Sheila Rivera, and you know that I love comedians. Yeah, of course. I think you would be a great comedian. Um, you know, I, I'm just casual, you know? I, I know I get laughed at sometimes, and I, I, you know, I roll with it. I'm like, yeah, I did that on purpose, but you know, whatever. Do you think you'd ever try doing stand-up? <laughs> I think it's really hard to write content out. You know what I'm saying? Is that hard for you? Do you have to write content? Uh, I do a lot of complaining. <laughs> <laughs> but does it come naturally to you? Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a call. I can't get a, a good response from you right it's now. It's a calling to be this broken, truthfully. So it, it just comes to me. Okay. But it, it's, a, it's such a fun outlet. So I love, actually, Humberto discovered me on Check It Out. Oh, no way. So I love when he talks with comedians. It's always really juicy because he gets into the nitty gritties. Okay. He's like, what's your trauma? Wait, what do you mean you were discovered by? What? I was on Humberto's show, Check It Out. Okay. And that's how I got, got on the and zoo. And you were just being casual about? I was. They asked me to come on. You didn't even try? You were oh, just I, like? We just had a connection. It was like. When, <laughs> You know, we're like two brothers from another mother. Oh, I love That's it. Right. A little love note to Humberto. That's right. All right, guys, <laughs> so check it out. This is Humberto's interview with Sheila Rivera. Okay, so we needed a few minutes, but we shared it a little early, which is unlike a Cuban and a Puerto Rican, and, uh, you know, I don't know how we did it. Oh, no, you know, we're always late. Siempre tarde. You don't okay. want to be on time. You were an aerospace engineer. You worked for NASA at some point, and now you're a comedian. So we have a lot to talk about. We do. Because I don't know how you get from one point to the other, so we'll work our way backwards a little bit. You've got a comedy special coming up. I do. It's coming up, and uh, it was a big dream of mine when I first started doing comedy, so HBO is, uh, yeah, HBO Latino. Nice. And what's it called? Que se yo. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Shayla Rivera, funny rocket scientist. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, how did you get into aerospace engineering? Tell me about what that was like working for NASA. Let me tell you, the story began a long time ago in Puerto Rico. Born and raised in Puerto Rico, then my parents moved us all to Texas to start it. I had to learn English. In Texas, not easy because they don't talk English, you know. So I went to A&M and I studied aerospace engineering and once I left there, I went to work for NASA. I did. I worked for McDonnell Douglas for the Space Shuttle Space Station, the Apache helicopter, stuff like that. It was fun. So, yeah, aerospace. And aerospace was cool. I mean, this is 1983 when I graduated. That's the, I mean, the shuttle was really the hottest thing out there. But what is it like working at a place like NASA? What, what, you know, what, like... Did people crack jokes or, or was it a very serious environment? Was it a very sterile environment? Yeah. 
Yeah, people at NASA crack jokes, but they're kind of dry. Do you know what I mean? These are people who are, they'll tell you a joke that's kind of like, you better get it, or they don't get, you know, they don't care. They're not really funny like we are funny uh, as Latinos, you know, uh, which is why probably they enjoy being around me because, you know, we're very down to earth and real. What was yeah. it like? Were you one of the only Latinas? Uh, in the room, typically, what was that like for you? Very, that yeah, that was, you know, if you look at the movie Hidden Figures, if you've seen that movie, that movie was very close to what I went into when I got there. I mean, when I got there, they still were wearing some leisure suits, and I don't even know if you know what that is. It was always, you know, it's not like the man just went like, oh my God, a woman, check her out. No, they were just scared. <laughs> they didn't know, especially a Puerto Rican woman. Yeah. What is that? We've never seen that before. <laughs> Wow, that's incredible. Okay, so so tell me about the process of, of leaving that field and, be, you know, I, I guess you, you just had way too much charisma for the aerospace field, huh? There you go. Thank you very much. That was it. No, I just, you know, I mean, I, I studied aerospace and psychology. So I really, it, there was a whole thing. I've always been into trying to figure out uh, what makes us who we are because I grew up in Puerto Rico and all my family was crazy. And, you know, you always want to know why is abuela like that, right? So uh, there was something missing in, uh, in, in engineering for me, which was that human connection. Not that engineers are not human. You know, you know how you, when you're somewhere where you're not really happy, eh, the most of us stay there forever, or a lot of people that I've met. But I, I'm kind of crazy, so I just started looking, and I, I landed sales. So I got into sales, and I got the, uh, it was oil and gas sales and environmental systems. Don't even ask me. Um, you like being out of, like, like, you like seeming out of place. Is that like the story of your life? Yeah, like well, wherever you, be, you people think you might not belong, that's okay. I'll, that's where I'll go. That's we'll exactly that. it. My, you know, my first uh, ever, uh, what came out of my mouth as a comedian, the first phrase ever is exactly what I am. I'm a sensitive woman with a male ego. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so <laughs> I'm <That's... totally laughs> but I got exposed to motivational speakers which I had never been exposed to before. And people would say, you should be a comedian. And I'm like, hey, I'm trying to be enlightening. It's stupid though, right? I was really, really upset when people would tell me that. And uh, in 1993, I did my first five minutes of comedy. And I have to tell you, I'm about to be an overnight sensation now. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Cause that's how it goes. But yeah, I mean, I, I always say comedy really found me. I wasn't ever thinking about doing stand up. Uh, you know, we talk about how we resonate within our, the Latino uh, spectrum. How do you feel about crossing over to non-Latino audiences, you know, black and white audiences? You know, you can begin in Texas. I have never had a problem with that, to be honest with you, because I think I don't come from um, trying to sell something or trying to say something. I'm just telling you mostly about me, my experiences and stuff like that. And people relate to them so and you know when you point out the uh, the silliness of some cultural ideas like you know like latinos beat their children and here that? in this country where you can't even talk about that that's barbaric oh come on you got to hang out with latinos you know we'll show you how to do it we'll beat your children you won't even know it so it's like so i'd like to talk about what i observe shayla thank uh, you so much for talking uh, to us today you have such an inspiring story there's just more and more that i you know i want to hear and then um you know we'll we'll catch up again and and i can't wait to see the special i can't wait to laugh and and hear more about you. And I also hope that people see this and see, look, you can do a bunch of things in life. You can go work for NASA. You can do some sales in between with some, you know, the, some, some people in tech and Dallas, try to, you know, take them on, try to, you know, sell the big deal, but then you can go live your dream on a comedy stage. That's right. And I will add this. It really is not because you're educated or you have a degree or anything like that. It's because you keep on keeping on, you keep showing up to the arena. That's it. No se me vayan, because up next we are talking to Edwin Lecon, and you are watching The Zoo. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Zoo. I am so excited to present to you guys our next guest. He is the producer and creator of Entrenos. Give a nice warm welcome to Edwin Lacona. Thank you, thank you. How are you? I'm great, I'm great. We are so excited to have you here. Now, some of my favorite comedians have appeared on Entrenos, like Eric Rivera and Gina Brion. And another one of my favorites, Alex Carabano, is going to be on the new Absolutely. special. Absolutely. And Mark Vieira. Yes, Mark. Uh, 
As a matter of fact, Mark and Alex episode aired, I want to say, two weeks ago? Wow. Premiered two weeks ago, yeah. They were part of our uh, competition. Uh, I think the show has grown enough um, that we wanted to also take a look at other cities and other states and uh, couldn't travel right now, right? And even though we shot the show uh, uh, at the beginning of the year, um, we ended up uh, having an audition, people were submitting. We think we, I think we got about 300 or 500 submissions. Alex and Mark happened to be uh, two of the fi five finalists. Went to New York. HBO put out the carpets and invited everybody out, and they put on a big show. And uh, we ended up selecting Mark and Alex as one of our uh, two finalists uh, for the winner show. And I think we're going to do it again this year. I I'm not sure, but I think we're going to run another virtual competition, uh, hopefully in November. Wow. You know? Now, did you know about Mark and Alex prior to the? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, Mark's been around for quite a while. He's a seasoned comedian. And actually, I was surprised that he submitted, but he did. And we were happy to have him. And uh, I, you know, I, we knew that he was going to be uh, you know, a tough competitor. And I think we, we initially were going to only select one. But knowing that Mark was involved, we, we saw Alex, we saw a couple, and we just decided on the spot uh, that, uh, you know, Alex had enough, uh, enough material, enough good material that we wanted to include on the show. So we ended up, uh, they both won, and that's why that show is called The Winners. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, it's a, it was an interesting show. I love, I mean, I've known Alex for years. I've been on many shows with Alex. <laughs> I actually used to eat at his vegan restaurant yeah. in New York. So I think that this moment, I don't know Mark personally, but for Alex, right. I know that this moment is so long overdue because he is fantastic. Yeah, you know, uh, it's one of those things where um, the platform was created to give an opportunity, right? Uh, even though I know he's, he, he has a shop, Comedy is his passion. He, I think he has a, a next to his shop. He also has like a, a, a comedy room, right? Yeah, New York Comedy uh, Club. Co correct. <laughs> and um, a, in New York, like everybody knows him as well as Mark. So it was one of those things that um, we knew that there was an opportunity there. We also knew that he had enough material for us to showcase him and give him that platform. And he took advantage of it, you know, submitted and he won. And we're, we're happy with it. <laughs> so before we get too into it though, because I'm like I don't, I like comedy, but I'm not really in the world of comedy, you know. So I'm just like, um, what is Entre Nos? It's like explain to us what that idea is, the concept is, and it's brought to us by HBO. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So Entre Nos, we didn't want to give it a traditional comedy name, right? But we definitely wanted to come up with a name that it included, and everybody knew that it was a Latino platform mm. uh, for comedy. Uh, HBO came up with the name, got a couple of their marketing people. Uh, and then the idea of the entire show was to showcase the next wave of Latino talent. And when I say talent, I'm not talking about just comedians, because some of these comedians are producers. Of course. They're directors, they're writers. They're creative as it yeah, is. Yeah, they're just, so we're just really become, this show by default has become a farm system for this Latino talent. It didn't intend out. It didn't. It, it wasn't initially uh, intended to do that, but by default, it became that because now, now we're um, not only showcasing them and going with them to the half hours, but we're also creating other opportunities, like in a small way, like a uh, Lord Michaels, like right. what he does with us. And now, well, HBO Max puts out so much content. Hundred percent. Sure. Yeah. Now I'm curious, what do you think makes a good tape? Because you know, for those of you who don't know, comedians submit to festivals like this. You have to yeah. submit usually a five to six minute tape. Usually has to yeah. be clean. Of like stand up? Preferably clean, but okay. it doesn't have to be clean. I just think that, you know, clean comedians have more, the breadth of distribution is bigger if they're clean, right? But they don't have to be clean. But uh, to be honest with you, they just have to, be themselves and that and and that charisma just needs to come across but the number one thing i look for is confidence if when they step on that stage and they're confident and they stick to that material and they're not moved by the reaction of the crowd like you know some not everybody's gonna laugh but if they they stick to their set then i know like okay yeah they're not pandering to the audience like they're, they're sticking to their set and they're sticking yeah they're committed and they're gonna eventually just tweak that joke out 
so it lands, you know, because not every, that's the thing with uh, the comedy world, it's so repetitive that they can work that one two minute joke for, I want to say like two months, three months, you know, and then once they got it, they got it and they move on to something else. But yeah, that's the, the best thing I can recommend is for them to be confident. The confidence, that's what yeah. it's all about. I like that. You need more of that. <laughs> yeah. So when you were younger, did you ever think that you'd produce or create something like Entrenos? Was this always a passion of yours? Uh, well, so yes and no. To be honest, I was chasing the music world. I wanted to be an A&R. I didn't know what an A&R was. I just used to say that. I wanted to be the guy who signs the artist. And then um, I got into a small little company called uh, Image Entertainment. I was in the mail room. And once I started seeing what they were doing, and there were the guys who were responsible for the movies that are Walmart and Blockbuster. Yeah, I'm dating myself. I see a lot of Blockbuster, though. <laughs> but, but yeah, so then I was like, oh, this is where I want to be, because this determines what initially makes it out in the marketplace, right? So that happened, that evolution happened, and then I started noticing that Nobody was creating, everybody was creating their passion projects, but nobody was creating anything that was going to evolve and allow the talent to grow. Mm. And I just thought that the comedy space was going to allow me to do that. Again, not reinventing the wheel. I just saw what Lauren Michaels did with SNL. I said, there's nobody doing that for Latinos. Let me figure that out. And then we gave birth to Entre Nos. And now we're plugging in our comedians, like uh, doing voiceovers for animated uh, family films. Mm -hmm. uh, right now I'm working with two of them behind the scenes, uh, pitching, you know, series and sitcoms. And it's que entre conocido y conocido, yeah. ahí se van metiendo, yeah. 100%. It's a, it's a little group of us that we see the big picture and we're just trying to you know, grow, grow with the talent and, and they see the big picture as well. They know that they're, they're opening doors for the next wave. I think it's fantastic. I think you're giving visibility. It's Thank so you. important what you're doing, and I love the people that you're picking. Thank and you. I'm excited to chat with you more. Guys, don't come, uh, don't go <laughs> anywhere. We'll be right back on the zoo with Edwin Lacan. Guys, welcome back to the zoo. Now we are here with Edwin Lacone, the creator and uh, producer of Entrenos. So I, I wanted to ask you, have you ever had any interest in doing comedy? Uh, no, to be honest <laughs> with you, no, no interest in comedy. Uh, it's funny because every comedian asks me the same thing. And it seems to be like the running joke is that a failed comedian turns into an executive or manager in that space. But no, I just realized that this is the space in that avenue that was gonna allow us to in a very way, in a very cost-effective way, uh, show and create this platform for uh, Latinos entertainers. Again, I, I love saying entertainers because they're not just comedians. Right, because I think I th that. the best stand-up comedians are multidimensional, and they can do so many things. And you know, you're giving them the platform yeah. to do that, which is so exciting. Yeah. I have to say, Gina Brion, I've been a friend of her. hers of many years. She just had a baby, yes, and I loved her Congrats, special. Congrats, Gina. Congrats, <laughs> Gina. Yes, Gina, and she's been yeah. interviewed on LA TV as well. She's yeah. on Check It Out with Humberto, and I love Gina, and she's one of my favorites. And I, another person who I I thought should have got a comedy special years ago. Yeah. Years well, ago. When Gina called me, I was in the middle of Entre Nose, and Gina was Gina already. Like, she didn't need me. She didn't need the show. She didn't need the platform. But she called me and she said, I want to be a part of this movement. You're creating this platform for Latino uh, entertainers. Like, I want to be a part of it. And I was like, hey, Gina, we're not, we're not, we can't pay you what you really worth. Mm. But she said, look, just talk to my management. Just understand that the bottom line, I'm just going to say yes, right? She, she was a part of it. It was great. Uh, she was part of the series. And then they loved her so much that we ended up doing a half hour special. And then from that half, half hour special, now she has an hour special. On the, she's a trooper. Yeah, she, she's knocking them out. Wow. And she just had a baby. Again, she, within a one year, she knocked out two comedy specials. She's a hard worker. She's always 100%. been a hard worker. And she's the hilarious. Hilarious. And hilarious. a very good yeah. person, too. Yeah. Now, I'm curious, are there any comedians that are on the scene that you are scouting or interested in maybe for next year? Uh, there are, but there aren't a list of are, that one of films. Right. He said they're on the list. I'm like, <laughs> tell us that would yes. not be They're on the list. They're on this list. Show so, us the list. Yeah, they're on this list. So when I'm allowed to go back to film, then I'm making those calls like, hey, uh, you got approved. You're on the list. Let's go film. 
Now let me ask you because obviously uh, so many comedy clubs are not open right now because mm -hmm. of COVID. You know, a lot of comedians like myself are doing shows on Zoom. Yes. And you know, I feel like there's it's torn. Some people like it's bad art form, and I personally love doing it because I'm very lazy to sit on the couch and just do, do my material <laughs> and not get up. It's a nice you're change. Funny. I don't have to be rejected in the basement. Hey, you said you're funny, Nikki. Say some more. Say some more. Entre nos. Entre nos. Entre nos. Entre nos. No. But, yeah. but what are you, do you watch any of the Zoom of comedy? Of course, I'm yes, I, I support all the comedians right now. So, uh, yes, we're, we have some Zoom live events with them. Uh, and yes, I think that they need to get that creativity out somehow, some way. You know, a lot of them, like, they've been on the road for so long and they work their materials out. And, uh, and because of COVID, it doesn't allow them to hit the road, right, and work any new materials. So this is probably the only way. This, the Zoom and the drive-ins now. The little drive-in comedy shows oh, that they're doing. Oh, I don't I know, know if you're familiar. Yeah, I'm doing they one tomorrow night. Yeah. They, oh, you're doing one? Yeah. Okay. Next month I'll be performing at a Chili's parking lot. Okay. So look oh, out you're for me. funny. <laughs> no, Caliente. Orlando. Uh, I don't know if you're not familiar with Orlando Labor, but he just mm -hmm. did one this Saturday. Him and I had a live conversation yesterday about it, and he said he loved it because now they're putting on the the drive-ins. They're, they're putting like a pickup truck so anybody like that that has a pickup truck in the front so that way they can sit in the in the in the bed yeah. and he has that real time reaction now for everybody else I've seen so many creative ideas. I know somebody who yeah. books a show around a swimming pool, that the comedian's behind the pool yeah. and the audience is all around it. I've seen <laughs> like drive-in theater yeah. shows. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it, it's been inspiring to see how so many people get creative. Yeah. And you can't keep the comedians quiet. You can't. Especially, I, I mean, that. that's what's really been most exciting. And I think that's the, the, that's the beautiful part is that, once again, they're trying to find an outlet, right? Excuse me. And that Zoom is not the most uh, probably ideal way because they don't get to see that that reaction, yeah, there's, there's a little delay, but they're they're trooping it out anyways, you know? Uh, and I, I think the Zoom shows are yeah. a great way to, to work on the writing. 100%. Because it holds you accountable, yeah. and you know, if you're on a regular on a Zoom show, sometimes it's the yep. same audience, so it forces you to write the new material. Yep. And I think you could still, you know, funny is funny. So if you could hear, <laughs> yeah. you know, you could still yeah. hear the laughter. It used to be a show, by the way, I, Funny is Funny. Funny is Funny, yeah. that was an homage. <laughs> <laughs> My line was an homage. I think it's really interesting, because personally learning about this, like, uh, industry, with the both of you right now, right here live, <laughs> um, how many submissions did you say you had? Like When we did the competition, we had three weeks to announce uh, uh, the finalists, right? Um, and within those three weeks, we had about 300, I want to say between 300 and 500 submissions in that three weeks. Okay. Back. People from here, like in all, the... Yeah, uh, all the, the... No, it was it was a, na a nationwide uh, okay. submission. It was open up, yeah. For sure, but like nation. Correct. And I think that's like crazy to think that there is a niche for this, yes, yet like you're niche. providing the platform right now, you know? Because like sometimes you don't hear about these people till they're like it, like fluffy, like he, yeah. you know, he's on you know, specials yeah. and stuff. And so it's like... 300 to 500 people in the country. And that's that just are in a like, three-week span. Right. So imagine if we had a month or two to just kind of really sort out. Like we we yeah. would have a lot more. And listen, and I can't be the only one. I stress this out, and I tell everybody, our show can't be the only one on network premium cable TV. It just can't. Like in order for Hollywood to pay attention to us we need to have another show pop up and then another one. And then another one. Otherwise, we're looked at as a one-off right. in the business. Yeah. Okay, that's the, like, that serves a purpose, that's it. So I keep telling people I can't be the only one with a show like this. Somebody else, you know, develop another one. Yeah. I'm curious, if you go to a comedy club on, on a random night, yeah. how many Latin comedians will you typically see on a show? One, if I'm lucky. To be honest wow. with you, one one if I'm lucky. Uh, it, somehow it, it, they've been isolated out of the mainstream comedy clubs, but they've created their own their own club, right? And their own yeah, and they're all little little, um, little group. Uh, my my job and what I always tell them is, you have to branch out, even if they keep telling you no still keep knocking at the, 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 the comedy club, the Laugh Factory, just keep knocking at those doors. But because of the show, now those comedians are getting uh, featured spots in the, the comedy store, the improvs, and like the real like big names, Caroline's in New York, so. 
and it's that's, working. And that's the craziest thing too, exactly like you said, because once you have a platform like that, right. you know, it, it's it's such a tipping effect with the clubs. Right. But when you do have a platform like a special, then the doors open right. to all the clubs. But it, it shouldn't have to be like that because I you agree. know. It's a shame. I agree. I think if you get to see the roster of our of our uh, series and our show, the only the only thing that connects them together is the fact that they're all Latinos, but not one of them is identical. Ooh. Not one of them is telling you the same story, the same joke, or the same experience, Latino American experience. They're all so. The purpose of the show was to show how three dimensional we are. You cannot put us in a box. I love that. And the only thing, again, the only thing that's tying everybody up together, so they're Latinos. It. And you know what? You're doing important work. Thank and you. And is it streaming now on HBO Max? It's streaming I, now on okay. HBO Max, yeah. And <laughs> Reynoso is streaming right now on HBO Max with two of my favorite comedians, Alex Carabano and Mark Vieira. Yes. Make sure you catch it now. Thank you so much for watching The Zoo, guys. We love you. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to follow us on socials at LATV.